everyone. I'm Preeti, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. And today I'm going to talk about the importance of software engineering. So moving forward, let us see how important is software engineering. So specific softwares is needed in almost every industry, in every business and for every function. So what does this mean? So every field there are uh, different sections of people, different types of people who are trying to use specific uh, softwares that are pertaining to their own businesses and for every different functionality. So in almost every industry, there are specific softwares. Uh, it becomes more important as time goes on. That is, yesterday it was different and today the technology is advancing. So if we go 10 years down the lane or 20 years down the lane, there was not that technology as we all are seeing now, right? So it is like how important it is. If something breaks within your application portfolio, a quick, efficient and effective fix needs to be done as soon as possible. So something happens to your application portfolio. Right? We have to take a quick action and you are supposed to uh, fix it as early as possible. And this is possible only with the concepts, the models that are there within the software engineering. So it's, it states to be very important. As we continue with more importance, let us see. It is a study and practice of engineering to build, design, develop and maintain and retire software. So here we have stated practice of engineering to build. So what are you, what do we mean by build? It is nothing but the process of converting source code to software artifacts that are used in our applications. Next, design. It is nothing but a process by which an agent tries to create various specifications to accomplish different goals or to meet his goals, an agent is trying to accomplish various software artifacts. Develop. It is a process of conceiving, specifying, designing, programming that involves various frameworks and maintain and retire the software. So moving further, there are varied areas of software engineering and it serves many functions throughout the application lifecycle. So whatever we want to define or whatever you want to elaborate or any model that you want to define, it is having an application lifecycle where it has to follow the proper lifecycle. So it is specific to varied areas or different areas of software engineering. Next, another major important is that it requires software engineers who are well educated, well educated and know the best practices and are disciplined and are cognizant of how the company develops software, the operation it will fulfill and how it will be maintained. So the important things is that it is like we will be able to build, design, develop, maintain and retire the softwares. And it is applicable to varied areas of software engineering. And it also requires software engineers to be well educated in the software engineering field by knowing the best practices and cognizant of how the company is trying to develop various softwares. Moving to a importance on the whole, it's like it's a new era where CIOs, chief information officers and the digital leaders now understand the importance of software engineering. Right? The impact can be both good and bad. It can have a bottom line. So what do we mean by bottom line? It is trying to have growing incomes and reducing the cost. It means that we are improving the bottom line of that particular company, right? It also includes this particular software engineering. It is including various or different areas like the vendors, the IT staff, and even departments outside of IT 
need to be aware of software engineering because it is having a lot of impact and it is increasing in day by day. It is increasing day by day in all aspects of daily businesses. Coming to the uh, today's agenda is we'll be covering few terminologies related to software engineering, positions held by software engineer and a data scientist, insights of software engineering, values of software engineer in a data science team, a brief comparison of the same. So we'll start off our major discussion with the terminologies, the major terminologies that are involved in the subject and what is the importance of software engineer and a data scientist, meaning they hold, both of them hold their own positions in their respective fields. So what are the major positions that each uh, person tries to hold? Insights of software engineering. Here we'll try to elaborate on what are the components associated with software engineering. And values of software engineering, meaning how important is this person, the software engineering in a data science team and trying to compare both of these things. So a brief comparison of the same. So moving further, terminology. So we'll start off with software engineering. Here, when you specify software engineering, just trying to split these terms, software and engineering. Software is nothing but a set of programs. And these set of programs are comprising of set of instructions, which form a software. And engineering is nothing but use of scientific principles to build a model. So when we just talk about software, there are two types of software. One is the application software and the other one is the system software, right? So what do we mean by system software? System software is like you are trying to interact with the uh, system or any other system or it is acting as an interface. Like examples could be operating systems and the drivers. Next, coming to application softwares. All of, you, all of us use these application softwares, like the MS Office. We all use words, we, we all use PowerPoint presentations, we all use Access, Excel to do different activities. So all these will come under application softwares. Moving to the next terminology, that is the data science, and then we have APIs, and then we have software models. So looking in depth or the exact definition of what software engineering is, it's defined as a process of analyzing the user requirements. That is trying to analyze or to know the user requirements. Analyzing is a process where you just try to get the things, but whether it is performed or not, that is the next step. But initially it is defined as a process of analyzing user requirements and then designing building and testing software applications, which will satisfy all those requirements. Next, coming to data science. It is an interdisciplinary field, trying to focus on knowledge from data sets. That is, it's an interdisciplinary field, which is trying to extract knowledgeable data from large amounts of data or large data sets we can see, or it is also considered as big data which are large and trying to apply knowledge and actionable actionable insights to solve problems in a wide range of application domain. So in simple terms, data science is trying to extract knowledge from data sets and trying to apply knowledge and actionable insights to deliver or to give a wide range of applications or to apply on different application domains. Moving further to the third terminology, that is the APIs, Application Programming Interface. It tells us about the connection between a computer or between computer programs. It's a type of a software interface offering a service to other pieces of software. So as an example, suppose if you want to check weather, examples of APIs, if you want to check weather, you just open our mobile, uh, just type weather report that's acting as an API. And if you want to just send an instant message in a Facebook, we open the app and then you are trying to send a message where one of your friend other side is trying to look at your message now or sometime later. So these are acting as application programming interface. 
Moving to the next terminology, it is the software process model. Software processes are activities for designing, implementing and testing the software system. So they, in short, you can see they are simple activities. A process are the activities for trying to design, implement and test a software system. A software system development process is complicated and involves a lot more of technical knowledge. That is where the software engineering models, its representations come into the picture. So firstly, to elaborate software process, they are nothing but the activities for implementing, designing the software system. And we require more technical knowledge. And to make all this possible or handy, we have an abstract representation of the development process that talks about the software process. Right. Now, here comes the discussion of having a group of data science people and a software engineering people. What is the relationship between both of these? So here we say that software engineers have become key players in data science teams. Software engineers have become a key players in the data science team. So it means how important are the roles of a software engineer in a data science team. But why? So let us see the importance of software engineering. So before we know exactly the importance of the software engineer trying to play, he, there are some confusions that arises with the term, terminologies itself in the field of data science. So firstly, let us look at the confusions between the data science and the software engineering. Firstly, data science team, its members and the role they play in the expertise, meaning you have a data science team. There are me members who play different roles. As in the college, we have various departments, each department having different kinds of people, teaching and non-teaching, and each one have their own roles. In the same way, when you are considering a data science team, you have different members and the role they play in their expertise. That's the first confusion. So confusion is leading to a question that's saying, where does this uh, engineering importance come into the existence? So moving to the second confusion, moving to the second confusion, it is division that occurs between the data science and the engineering experts in the data science team. So I repeat, how are you segregating the difference between data science and the engineering experts in the team. So how are you giving that division between a data science members and the engineering experts? That again is a confusion. Next, we are dealing with data and prediction. But what a software engineer has to do with data centric or data driven team? So this third confusion is like trying to focus on more about a data science where he does not require a software engineer. So what is it trying to say? Data science completely deals with data and production. But what will a software engineer do with data centric or a data driven team? So here we have to see what is data centric or what is data driven. So when you say data centric, it is nothing but it is trying to completely focus on the data, which is primary and permanent. It has nothing to do the applications which come and go. I repeat, data centric is nothing but trying to focus completely on the data, which is primary and permanent. But it has nothing to do with the applications that come and go. Next, data driven. Data driven is nothing but uh, trying to describe a decision making process involving by collecting data, extracting patterns and facts from that data and utilizing them for inferences. So moving further, there are some reasons for all these confusions that have been stated. So firstly, look at a, the terms, what each one does. A software engineer in a data science team is only an engineer with the knowledge of data. I repeat, a software engineer in a data science team is only an engineer with the knowledge of data. 
But a data scientist knows mathematics and statistics to understand the problem and the product. But he or she also knows programming language to build a model. So what is this reason trying to focus on? It is saying that software engineer completely focuses upon the knowledge of the data. Data scientist is able to do mathematics and statistics to understand the problem and the product. But to do all this, you require to have a programming knowledge to build a model where software engineering comes into existence and his importance is reflected here. So moving to the continuation of reasons, there is another question that arises is that what will a software engineer do in the team when the data scientist has both the mathematical and software skills? I repeat, what will a software engineer do? It is saying that data scientist is having both the mathematical and the soft skills. But what is the use of uh, bringing this software engineering into existence? It is that software uh, science team is responsible for something which is beyond the pure data science. That is to understand the concepts that is beyond the pure data science. There comes the existence of software engineering. So if you can look at the figure that is at the left bottom side, which is saying that software engineering is comprising data science and data engineering. Or in the other terms, you can say data engineering is surrounded with data science and data science is in turn covered with software engineering. So in a compact way, software engineering is trying to bound data science and data engineering. That specifies that data engineering focuses only on collection and preparation of data. Data science involves large data sets, the study on the large data sets, whether it is noisy, structured or unstructured data and some insights rel related to it. And on the whole, software engineering is trying to include both these things, which completely focuses on the data and the applications. So moving further, we come to the main focus of our discussion, that is the software engineering and the elements that is uh, it is surrounded with that is analyzing, planning, validation and verification, testing, design, programming, implementation, development. So these are the elements which completely elaborates what this term of software engineering tells us about. So before we move to the uh, elements or the components that are stated around the software engineering, let us look into the definition of what exactly is software engineering. Software engineering is an engineering approach on a software development of systematics application. It is an approach that is trying to develop an application in simple terms. And a software engineer is a person who is trying to apply principles of software engineering to design, develop, maintain, test and evaluate the computer software. So we have seen what is a computer software, what do you mean by design, develop, maintain, test. All these with the help of the principles, the software engineering does all this for us, who gives the result of trying to comprise all these elements and making a software engineering. So moving further, let us see the first one that is the analysis. So what do you mean by analysis? It is nothing but the process by which customer needs are understood and documented. So if you read the sentence again, it is like trying to make a customer just understand and document the things. You will, you will not focus on how do you do the things. It is like if you look at the second statement, expresses what to be built and not how it should be built. Meaning you are just analyzing. You are not looking into the depth of the concepts. So looking at some examples, users trying to withdraw a cash. So you are just trying to withdraw, but you are not knowing the exact procedures of how is it running in the background. Same thing if you are focusing on some name of an item, sale, uh, sale items name and its attributes are trying to be whatever you are trying to search, it gets included in the hash table and it's getting updated as a user does his various activities. So it is like you don't focus on how is it updating, whether it is removed or not. It's just like you are able to check out for the different item names and the related attributes. So analysis is nothing but you are just trying to 
build but not focus on how it is trying to be built so this is the first component of the software engineering next is the software development plan so the template that is there before you discusses in brief about what a software development plan looks like so when you start off by looking at this template we have introduction in the first go which is trying to comprise of various things of what are you trying to write or what are you trying to uh, what it should include like what is the purpose or what is the scope or what are the definitions what are the acronyms what are the abbreviations references and overview of the entire plan is kept in the introduction next comes the purpose purpose is nothing but for what what are the specifications specify the purpose of the the plan next comes the scope which is trying to uh, tell us about what project and how is it associated with or how is it associated to something else and how is it affecting or influencing the this particular document the scope has to be different next we have to define or list different definitions acronyms and abbreviations so in this plan the next factor is you have to define or define the terminologies its acronyms and the abbreviations that is trying to support the information and lastly you will be having references which is giving us a complete list of all the documents referenced elsewhere in the plan suppose you are trying to bring it some elsewhere and trying to relate it to the plan of yours here you have to specify the references so specify the sources from which the references can be obtained it's simple as our uh, research paper we specify references so it's like that so if you're trying to uh, compare your plan to something else try to bring the references from where you have done how it has to be done or some document that is helping you all that has to be put in the references so this is the next uh, element that we that i have shown you along with the software engineering so moving further the third one is the verification and validation so you uh, looking at the verification it is nothing but it is stating that are we building the software right that is you are just verifying so what do you mean by validating are we building the right software so there is a difference between are we building the software right and are we building the right software and we say verification is a static testing and validation is a dynamic testing so what does it say it is trying to say that it is not including the execution of a code or verification is focus on a piece of code and it does not include execution of a code but when you come to validation it is involving the execution of code as well so coming to some examples in general you can say there are some methods like reviewing walkthroughs inspections and desk checking that goes with verification and when you come to validation you are having something called black box testing and white box testing right so when we see black box testing it is a high level of testing that does not focus of the focus on the internal things right and when you come to white box testing it's also called a clear box testing if you take an example of the black box testing it's like your login screen for any applications that you are trying to open you just type your credentials and you get the screen out but we are not bothered about what internal things are happening it's like when you are driving a car your focus you know, is only on the start and stop button or the accelerator and the brake but the internal mechanisms we don't concentrate on so that could be discussed as the black box testing when you say white box testing it is like the complete study of the actual code internally and the workings behind it moving to the next element of software engineering is the testing so whenever you say software testing we test in terms of the test cases so sub consider uh, an example that is here wherein you are trying to write different fields like test case ids so you can have two you can have three you basing upon your application that many number of test cases can be written here just for an example we are considering two test cases and you are writing test scenarios for both both of them you are testing on their login functionality and then your test cases is like checking your user login and with the valid data and the second uh, test case id is checking user login with the invalid data 
So next, you can see in the diagram, you have test steps, which is try go to the relevant website, enter your username, enter your password, and then as usual, we click a submit. Same thing in the test case too, what are we doing? You are trying to give a, open the website, try to give username, password, and click submit to it. So when you are testing the data, there we change and give the passwords. So it is like uh, giving a user ID, then giving a password, then giving a user ID and other password, your expected result. User should log in if the details and the credentials are right and the user is not able to log in when the credentials are wrong. And the result and the expected pass or fail. So this is talking about the next phase that is the design part, another component of the software engineering. So looking at this particular diagram, initially the design phase is following in this manner that is problem partitioning and then we have abstraction, then we have modularity and then we have top down and bottom up strategy. So when you say problem partitioning, you are trying to break down the given problem into different modules and then trying to work on them. So when you say abstraction, it displays only the relevant attributes of objects and hides the unnecessary details. As I have taken the example before, if you are driving a car, you're just focusing on the start and the stop button or the brake and the accelerate. You don't bother about the internal things. So that is the best example of what abstraction means. Then third, we have the modularity. So this is modularity is nothing but trying to decompose a program into smaller programs with standard interfaces. Decomposition of a program into smaller programs with standardized specifications, uh, standardized interfaces. Okay, that is the third principle of the software design. Next is top-down and bottom-up approach. So when you say top-down approach or top-down strategy, we know that it is like trying to come from the higher cadre to the lower cadre, where at the higher cadre, all the specifications are already built and the lower levels of people start working on it. But when you come to bottom up strategy, it is like you don't have the basic specifications already defined or basic things already defined at the bottom. It is like you are starting from the, the bottom and trying to uh, add more things and build a model. So these are the design that uh, talks about the module, one of the component or element of the software engineering. So moving to programming, that is next feature or next component in software engineering. So if you can look at this, initially it is stating that programming is pri uh, primarily a personal activity. That is, it completely focuses on an individual. But when you take software engineering, so this particular slide is trying to talk about how you are relating program to software engineering. So programming is an individual's task, but when you say software engineering, it's a team activity. Next, programmer writes the entire program or is trying to develop a code. But here, the architects, the software components combined with various other components to build a system. So I repeat, programmer is trying to write the entire program or develop the code. A software engineer artic, uh, architects the software components combined with components to build that particular system. Coming to the third uh, difference or their work, we can say that it specializes in coding and has to acquire technical skills. Okay, here we are supposed to uh, specialize in a scientific method of operation which the stakeholder and tries to develop solutions to it. Moving further, we have a wide range of approach towards the concepts of programming and applications. That is, every day we have a change in different uh, technologies, different programs, different applications that come across. And a software engineer is trying to craft those products with good quality and trying to uh, satisfy uh, the customer needs, you can say, or trying to have a cautious attitude. Next, this works on just one aspect of software development, meaning programming is just one aspect in the development. But when you take software engineering, it is trying to work on a large software system that is to be developed. 
and which is similar to the modern engineering practices. Fine. So this is regarding the programming in the software engineering. So moving to the next one, we have implementation. Implementation that goes along with the field of software engineering. You are initially having a design document. That design document translates it into a programming language from which you are trying to retrieve the source code from it and then compile, link and load it to the processor. Load that particular module. Once you are loading it, you are trying to run that program, trying to identify the errors or bugs and trying to fix those errors, fix those bugs. And then you are trying to uh, send or receive a corrected source code. So implementation is a process where you are trying to translate design into programming language and then generating a source code. You compile, link and load it to the processor and then it loads trying to run that particular program, identify errors, fix those bugs or errors, and then receive a corrected source code. So this is the next phase of the software implementation, software engineering, that is just after the programming. So moving to the next element, it is the development process. So this development process is broadly categorized into four sections. That is trying to define the project scope and then trying to specify some features or you can say its specifications, then trying to build that project and then deliver that particular product to the customer. So moving to the single phases, initially, the first development process starts with defining the project scope. So what is it trying to focus on? The initiation of the project. What are the initial steps that you do? Or what is the analysis and planning that happens? Next, when you are moving to specify features, it completely focuses on the requirement specifications and the design. What type of model are you trying to, what type of uh, model are you trying to take or what type of framework are you trying to fit in to the features that we have specified. Then you go to the third category where you are trying to build that particular product. Once that product is built, our focus will be on testing and the development. Once all this is done, the delivering of the product to the customer is done and then we have a support team. Delivery team and the support team that focuses on trying to get the feedbacks of from the customers and then trying to fix anything which is uh, related to that uh, in that particular customer concerns. Right. So now we are going to talk about the values of a software engineer adding to a data science team. So what are the main values a software engineer is adding to a data science team? So here I'm trying to specify two responsibilities. The first responsibility is trying to say that a software engineer comes into the picture when data is turned into a scalable product. The first responsibility or the first value is that when the data is trying to be turned into a scalable products and then to the scalable product, you're trying to add extra hardware and trying to enhance its performance. Next comes the second responsibility. You are trying to productize the data science work and how that productized work is given to the external customers or how is it serving to the external customers. That's the second responsibility. Moving to the third responsibility, it is like we have to be updated about the current AI trends in the market and trying to guide the data science team about the new technologies would benefit that particular team. So who does all this task? A software engineer has to be updated with the current uh, AI trends in the market and should guide the data science team to know and what are the various new technologies that will benefit the team. So building of APIs, that again is proving the various values that it adds, that is 
involving in creating application programming interface. We have seen what is application programming interface, right? And trying to specify how these software components should interact and create a user interface, right? Just like as I told you, trying to send a message on Facebook, you just open the Facebook app, uh, type a message and just forward it, right? And uh, data science engineer converts the models to APIs. And that can be easily used by the other applications. And here, the model should be scalable, flexible, and reliable. And it also uses different models built by data scientists and tests them as well. It is also responsible and allows the data scientists to completely focus on the building models, right? So the software engineer is trying to bring different uh, notions of how do you uh, involved in building APIs. So model examination. So the final product, whatever is obtained, it's completely relies on a software engineer. And we are trying to build a common model that is easily managed and used by various people in the team. And by this easy management, we can also have a model that is easily moderated to suit other product requirements as well. So the complete final product is by is relying totally on a software engineer. He tries to bring a uh, build a common model, and then that model should be suited to other problem uh, product requirements as well. And all these things have to be updated if any changes happen now and then. That's called model examination, which is again done by the software engineering team. Next comes model testing and deploying. So here, when you say model testing and deploying is nothing but you are trying to test the things, review the code of the model, and then take a decision to deploy that particular model. So who does all this? It is the main focus of the software engineer in the data science team who tries to focus on what has to be tested or what has to be tested, how much has to be tested, and how do you review the code of the model and how the decision is taken, whether the decision has to be taken to deploy the particular model or not. And you also should have a skill set that uh, it is saying that software engineers don't necessarily need much of statistics and trying to learn machine learning every day. The focus should be more on design and architectures. If the focus is more on design and architectures, their job involves a lot around testing the model and trying to build a good model. And some skills that they generally have to acquire are Hadoop, SQL, MapReduce, and many other things. And few tools that are used in common are MySQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, uh, that is used in uh, most parts of the testing, all these things. So there are some skill sets that have to be at at way, uh, attained. Right. And here, uh, a data science team is always said incomplete without a software engineer. Why is this statement actually told? It's because it is completely revolving around the final product. So when you say revolving around the final product, it is software engineers main focus is on the final product. Whether the model is perfect or not, it has to be just checked. And the data scientists only build the model, but data engineers check and add the insights to the model. So I hope this is very, very clear. The data scientists will only build the model, but the data engineers check and add insights to the model. What has to be changed based upon the uh, present scenarios? All that updations is done by a uh, data engineer. But a uh, data scientist only is trying to build the model. So here we understand how important is the data engineer. And continuing to it, you have a lot of things that need smooth functioning of the team, where it involves alignment of various business objectives and analytics backend. So to run with smooth functioning of it, you have a proper alignment between the business objectives and analytics, where the focus is by a data engineer. And it also brings software engineering culture to the data science team that is trying to bridge the gap between the data science and the data architects. 
So what is this data engineer or a software engineer trying to do? It is trying to bridge a gap between the data science and the data artifacts. So we are listening to a lot of terms that are there in the data science team. All that is trying to build a gap between the data engineer or a software engineer. So fall again, uh, so continuing with some more uh, uh, statements, we can state that even with perfectly sophisticated models can go wrong without engineer, meaning a data science team, even though it is completely perfect without an engineer, there can be some flaws because they act as important pillars. The data engineers, the software engineers act as important pillars to the organizations, which make function flawlessly is the job of an engineer. And finally, coming to the brief comparison of the same, as I stated in my today's agenda, that is a brief comparison of a data scientist and a software engineer in data. So let us start off with the main motivation. Main motivation is the main purpose of the data scientist is trying to get novel insights from the data or trying to gather novel insights from the data. What type of data is it? Is it noisy, whether it's structured, whether it is unstructured? So different things he tries to get insights of it. That's the main motivation of a data scientist. Coming to software engineering in data, he tries to design, build in a robust data management system. So having a data management system, he's trying to design and build a robust model. Coming to the next uh, category, that is the core competencies. So what are the core things that are required or uh, you can say it is like asking the right questions to the data, interpreting the answers. So completely data related questions. What type of data is it? Whether it is, it will give us the answer or it will not give us the answer is the main work that is done by a data scientist. But when you come to software engineering in data, when you, what do you say the core competency of a software engineering in data mean? He is trying to build and maintain components like databases, queues, making sure coda, uh, code is production ready. Meaning he's trying to completely focus on the building and the maintaining of the databases, whether it is completely production ready or it is ready for the release. All those focuses is done by a software engineer. Coming to the third difference, it is trying to read some domain specific research, meaning completely core, uh, very, uh, domain specific, meaning if you are trying to focus only on the structured data, the different techniques, the different methods applicable to it is completely done by a data scientist. And on a whole, it tries to manage or how data management system works, you can say, how the entire data management system is trying to work. Next, uh, there are a few dislikes. It's like debugging low level errors a data science does and software engineer in data one of work, meaning he tries to focus on each and every component that is there or discussed in the model. And what can, what are the things that you can appreciate for a data scientist and a software engineer? For a data scientist, he focuses on the complex models that require smarts to be formulate and prove, meaning complex modules are just solved with the help of a data scientist and to say the positiveness of a, day, a software engineer, it is like the automation and the elegant code that they provide. And finally, we'll be talking about some tools used in the relevant fields, that is data scientists, Jupyter notebooks, SQL, big data frameworks, and coming to software engineering, it's nothing but in general command line, big data frameworks. So this ends a brief comparison of both the things and both uh, both data scientists and the software engineering in data. So this is the end of our discussion and next agenda would be on the introduction to software engineering. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.